Does your complex to-do system have you stressed out? Before you download yet another application, consider this. The right solution might be the application that's built right into your phone. In this video, we'll review why Apple Reminders might just be the only to-do application that you need. Welcome to Apple Remi Welcome to Apple Reminders. Welcome to App of the Month featuring Apple Reminders. If you have an iPhone, iPad, or Mac, then you have Apple Reminders. That might just be the best thing about it. It's free and built right in on all of your devices. Apple Reminders has a clean interface and its integration into the Apple operating system is unmatched, especially when it comes to a free app. It features things like location-based reminders. It's one of the few places where Siri is actually useful and it can do things like remind you when you are texting someone. So it's great if you're forgetful or busy or both like me. So it's got a lot of built-in advantages, but how do you take this simple tool and actually make it work for you in your productivity system? Let's see how to set it up. You can select what lists you want to show up in the pinned menu up top. You can rearrange the stock ones. You can even create your own list and pin that to the top. I've done that here. I have one called Inbox that I created. I've pinned that to the top. And that's the default list where all of my tasks go if I were to ask Siri to add a task for me. Or if I'm just creating a new reminder, it usually goes into the inbox as the default list. The goal here is to stop the worry and the stress that you might forget something. Offload that cognitive ability so you can spend less time thinking about what you have to do and more time enjoying life. Why then do I recommend Apple Reminders as the go-to to-do list application and how do I exactly use it? Apple Reminders is my digital to-do list for everything from simple tasks all the way to managing this YouTube channel. So let's start with the simple. One of the best features in Apple Reminders is the grocery list. It automatically creates categories for you. So all you do is type in your groceries and it'll sort things like dairy, meat, snacks, dessert, and so on. You can manage those headers yourself, put things in the right spot if it categorizes them wrong, and you can manually organize those headers so your list can be organized in the way that you walk through the store. Maybe I just do that, I don't know. This list can also be shared with individuals. You see on mine, it is shared with my wife, indicated by the little person icon on the right. So that's a simple use. What's a more complex use for Apple Reminders? Let's check out my creative list. This list houses everything for podcasts, YouTube videos, and newsletters, including video ideas and videos throughout the different phases of production. I prefer to use the Kanban board in Apple Reminders. They call it column view. So if you go up to the three dots in the top right hand side, you can choose between list view or column view. I have columns and I move things from left to right as they get through the various stages of production. You'll also probably notice that each one of these has a little icon next to it. Everything in this list is linked to a note in various applications, either Bear Notes or Apple Notes. I've said it before, and I still think this is one of the best productivity hacks that actually helps me get more done. Having the ability to link a note directly to a reminder lets me jump back and forth between the apps easily. If I'm done managing my tasks in Apple Reminders and I have an idea that I need to go directly into the note, it's an easy one click on any one of my devices to get out of Apple Reminders, get into the Notes app, and get my idea down before it's lost. I'll show you how I've been linking notes. There's a number of ways to do this. There's not really a right way, but if you want to link notes, this is how I've been doing it. So we'll run through a quick example. Let's say I have a new uh, video idea in Apple Notes. I create the note, link my video template to it. I'm gonna highlight the note title, right click it and click share, then to reminders that way. I'm also going to copy the title to my clipboard. That'll be important for the next step. Once you're done sharing two reminders to the list that you want it to go, in my case, it's going to the creative list. I run my shortcut that helps me create subtasks. This shortcut takes the note title, 
finds the recently created shortcut with that title and creates all of the subtasks for that. So I have one for writing, editing, filming, B-roll, and social media, so I don't forget to do anything throughout my process. It also takes that title that I copied and tags it onto the subtasks. So it would be write the video, edit the video, shoot the video, do B-roll for the video, and do a social post for the video. This is one of my gripes with Apple reminders that we'll get to later, but this gives me the, the ability when I schedule subtasks on the calendar, I know which video it's for, so I don't just have a task sitting on my calendar that, calendar that says, write the video. That's not super helpful to me. And lastly, you can turn lists into templates. So one of the few places that I use this is for travel. I have a packing list, especially if I'm gonna be bringing a camera and a drone along so I know all of the batteries, chargers, cables, everything that I need, I make sure that I don't forget it, including deodorant. You don't wanna forget that one. You'll also notice that I don't use tags or smart lists really throughout reminders like I do in Apple Notes, but just know that feature is there. It works pretty much the same. So if you want to tag specific things in a overall list and then be able to filter down to that project or task level via tags and smart lists, you can do that. I've seen some pretty creative implementations of those. I'll link those in the description down below if you want to check them out. For me, in my use case, I didn't find it very useful. I've been using Reminders for about a year now. I've checked off over 1,800 tasks in Apple Reminders, but it's not without its downsides. It is a pretty basic application at its core, which isn't necessarily a downside. In the world of do-it-all applications, I still find a little bit of comfort in the fact that applications like Apple Reminders do one thing. It does reminders and that's it. Now that doesn't leave me wanting more from the application, specifically task entry. If you've used any of the other options that feature natural language input, like Todoist, it's probably still the best on the market. Apple Reminders really lags behind in that department. And generally the user interface with Apple Reminders takes a few more clicks than some of the other third-party applications that are out there, especially if they support natural language input. So in Apple Reminders, if you wanted to say, take out the trash tomorrow, it picks up the tomorrow but then you kind of have to tap to get it to actually set that as the due date. Whereas something like Todoist would just pick that up automatically. It's no clicks. You write it as is and you send it off and it is there how you want it. I'm also not a huge fan of how recurring tasks are set up in Apple Reminders. There's nothing wrong with it. It behaves how you would expect. You set a recurring reminder, something like take out the trash every week. We'll stick with that example. And every week on whatever day, it will come up with a task in your to-do list for that day. Now, if you don't check it off, it just keeps getting punted to the next day. Whereas other applications like Todoist are a little bit smarter with how they handle recurring tasks. You can skip recurrences. You can push them to a different day. You can even have it so it won't do the recurrence if you missed it on Tuesday and you checked it off on Wednesday, it will push your next occurrence to the following Wednesday if you have it set up that way. So there's just some additional flexibility in some of these other pro paid applications. Probably not a big deal for most people, but I thought I would mention it. And lastly, the gripe I mentioned before, subtask. So subtask management is just a little bit more difficult than it needs to be, especially on the Mac. In order to get into the menu, it's a couple of clicks again to add in the subtasks. And then when they show up on the calendar view, it doesn't show you which parent reminder those subtasks are linked to. So both of these reasons are why I created the shortcut to do this for me automatically. So that way, you know, it's automatically tagging the subtasks onto the parent reminder that I want. And then when I go into the calendar review, each one of those subtasks has the video title attached to it. So I know what I'm supposed to be working on throughout the week. But that's pretty much it for downsides. I mean, and in the grand scheme of things, those are pretty minor gripes, especially for a free application.
Reminders has a ton of features that power users will love despite some small UI complaints. This simple task manager is a great choice if you just need to worry about checking things off and not how cool or complex your system looks. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, subscribe for more app and productivity reviews, and I'll see you next time. Later.